Ladies and gentlemen, Airship Caravan! Oh, yeah! <laughs> yes! <laughs> Fellas, thank you so much for taking some time out of your day to join us. Uh, I appreciate it so much. My co host today is uh, Joseph Barber, aka JB Music. Um, this is this is Brady, this is Taylor. Gentlemen, could you please kindly introduce yourself? Let me know whereabouts in the world you're enjoying being a Minnesota Viking fan. And uh, please plug or promote anything that you'd like. Brady, you want to go first? Oh, sure. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yep. I'm Brady Matt, uh, drummer for Airship Caravan. Um, based out of St. Paul, Minnesota. Loving the bikes. Let's um, go. Skull of the bull, baby. <laughs> the old skull. So, uh, yeah. Um, just released a new album here, uh, Crowd Control. Um, Looks like that. It's been a lot of fun with it. So. Hell yeah. We'll jam some of those tunes for sure. Taylor, uh, do the same if you could, please. All right. Uh, like you mentioned, I'm Taylor Dahlman. I play bass for Airship Caravan. So you got the the rhythm section, if you will, tonight. Uh, I'm in Excellent. Rogers, Minnesota. So live about 30, 45 minutes away from, from Brady there. Also a Vikings fan as well, I hope. Yeah, I don't really watch too many sports, but I'll take when it. I do, I support the Vikings. So. Fellas, before we dive in, doing my research today, something that kind of jumped out to me I thought was interesting is the multiple EPs you've released through 2022, but yet almost all the same songs are on each EP. I have not seen that before. I'm just curious your thought process of, of going about that. Uh, yeah, so that's called, uh, what do we call, what is it, the waterfall, the waterfall. release? Yeah. Yep. Method. Um, so <laughs> you start off with the, you know, it's just a single, and then you add on to that single uh, for each release there forward. And how many singles do we have off of this? Five or six. Yeah. And all those streams, they will go towards your album, actually. So that was the thought process on it. I've um, never heard of that before. That's an interesting. I mean, did it work? Did you guys realize your see your numbers increasing and and crowd get a little bit bigger and people knowing the yeah. words and stuff? Yeah, I mean, before the album even came out, we had twenty thousand streams on the album, you know, or something like that. Um, so cool. Yeah, it's just a good way to kind of you know constantly promote it. It forces us to constantly promote it, constantly uh, get people to start listening and get prepared for the actual album release. Otherwise, you'd sit there and you'd have, you know, one or two singles and then the album release, and then kind of done there. So we just wanted a constant release of music. That was kind of our thought process on it. So Well, when you joined, we were in the process of chugging a beer. I don't know if you have a beer, but you feel free to join us, and I feel like it's appropriate to start off with Wasted, a.k.a. <laughs> Sauced. What's the... Uh, what's the what was the thought process behind the band name? How did you did you pick it? And give me like one or two really sh almost band names that you that almost made the pick but didn't, if you can remember. I can tell you one for sure. Um, our first like show way back before uh, Brady was even our drummer was uh, Blue Lotus. That one stuck around for <laughs> just a little bit. Um, Blue Lotus. That's but, not bad. Yep, and then. Uh, the name Airship Caravan uh, was actually from our uh, guitarist, Jack. Uh, I don't remember 100% how he thought of that one, but... Uh, just... When I recall, he was doing a bunch of research on other band names, which just like, enter random words, and somehow came up with Airship Caravan. That's what I heard, but that was before my time. I legit feel like I've seen that phrase in Final Fantasy III. <laughs> Maybe wonder. there's like a floating uh, ship at one point in Final Fantasy, and I want to say they call it the Airship Caravan. It was uh, <laughs> for a long time. If you searched our band on Google, it would come up with uh, Top Gear as the top results because they did like Airship something. So it took a little while, but from all my searches, it seems like we're in front of them now. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, <laughs> JB, what what question do you have uh, for the fellas? 
My question to you guys is, being from Minnesota, do you have you have you been able to travel out of state for your music? Or have you been able to perform out of, like, uh, just out of, like, your environment? Uh, so we've been to the surrounding states uh, a couple of times. We've been to South Dakota, Wisconsin, and we played a show in Iowa as well. But we got something that Brady, you know, has been putting a lot of time into coming up here. Do you want to talk about that, Brady? Yeah. Um... Has this been announced yet? I hasn't yet. Uh, so we can break the news we... right now? Yeah, yeah, breaking the news. Let's we, go. Uh, we need to, it needs to be broken. So, <laughs> <laughs> so first year's hearing it. Uh, yeah, we actually announcing uh, our first tour. Um, heading out to the East Coast. Got dates in Boston, Connecticut, uh, Louisville, Kentucky, Raleigh, North Carolina, Nashville, and Ooh. back through Chicago before home. So. Dude, that's awesome. Hell yeah. Let's go. Yeah. Let's yeah. let's yeah, go. Crazy. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> and you put all this together yourself? Oh, yeah. Yep. Um, we actually <laughs> wow, got invited on to the tour initially, and then the touring bands dropped out, and we had a decision right then and there, like, all right, do we continue with it, or do we <laughs> drop out as well? And we continued with it. Of course, all the venues that was initially found dropped. <laughs> so we started from the ground ground zero, you know, like a month and a half out. So we got it. <laughs> Way to hustle, Brady. Hell yeah. The hard work's going to pay off, man. Yeah. It's been a lot. <laughs> Chat wants to know, uh, uh, is there a ritual or something funny you guys do while recording? Example, he's an artist himself, and he likes to change the lights to fit the mood of the song. Is there anything odd that you do uh, when it's your turn to lay down your section? Uh, I don't think there's anything odd that we do specifically. We're all just kind of goofy in general when we're uh, recording, almost regardless of the song. It'll be, like, goofy. If it's a serious song, we'll be serious for uh, what we need to do, and then afterwards, it's right back to, you know, being silly. What about, like, when when the recordings are completed? Is there, like, a fun (laughs) celebration ritual or anything? Cause if not, we gotta create one. We gotta create one. We gotta create one. We gotta yeah, create one. I, was gonna say, I don't know if we have a completion ritual, other than, uh, you know, just. Uh, well, let's start it right now, fellas. Congratulations on finishing the album, Crowd Control. Let's Give let's drink a beer out. right now. Let's drink a beer well, right now to album. start the ritual, because I want to feel something. <laughs> All right, I got a lot more questions, but I do want to do the trivia as well. Taylor, Brady, you guys get to decide the topic. I need to know the movie or TV show that you know the most about, one or the other. And uh, you both can answer. You both can, I guess, it's hard to talk while the music's playing, but maybe just message each other back and forth in the next minute or so. I'll jam some music to stall. But let me know what movie or TV show where if I ask you something on this, you will not get stumped, because if you do, you bust out the hot sauce. But if not, <laughs> I bust out the hot sauces and uh, we'll essentially get tortured. And we'll see what happens. Here we go. So there's there's some serious classic rock influence for sure going on in your guys' music. A, do you have the topic? And B, just rattle off some, some artists when you were a lot younger that influenced the music you create today. Uh, so yes, we do have a topic: the Office, uh, U.S. version. Excellent. Um, and for me, I listened to a lot of when I was younger, Black Sabbath and uh, Led Zeppelin. When I was probably oh, jeez, I don't even know how old I was, but it slowly, you know, got heavier going into like Asking Alexandria and Born of Osiris and stuff like that. Um, uh kind of also a date member and stuff like that but uh yeah. brady what about you yeah um big one for me a date remember event sevenfold a little bit of a metal head myself uh, <laughs> well, you, can, you can kind of tell a little difference between the drumming from previous album to this one i wasn't on the previous album so okay it, bit, yeah, i i don't really get those vibes the, the oh. that you just uh gave us references yeah. What, what, how do we go from there? From Horn of Osiris, Ben Sevenfold, 
data. Remember, how do we get to to airship though? So a lot of the writing, uh, especially currently, is done by our guitarist Jack and our singer DJ, and they both listen to a lot of like uh, Tame Impala. Uh, another one I think would be the Beatles, Foo Fighters, especially for DJ. Um, trying to think of some of Jack's favorite bands, but I'm I'm coming a blank. Hey, the Elephant. Just, yeah. that's a good one too uh, let's see if you guys really do know a thing or two about the office well, and I'm going to let JB rattle <laughs> off a couple questions to you but here we go now this one I, I feel like this is kind of a hard one to start with so this will judge how much you know about the show I already said use F so we'll see in the office Michael burns his foot on the George Foreman grill he then asks the employees who else has had a legitimate dis disability. Who replies that as a teenager, he or she was once in an iron lung? Creed Bratton. Who is it? Creed Bratton. Give me a hell yeah! <laughs> that is correct. Damn it! Well done. All right, boys. So, pick pick a number one through fifteen. I'm gonna drink a bunch of hot sauce, and then I have to pour beer in a shoe and drink it as we continue to ask you questions. I'll let you pick the number there, Brady. Twelve. Number twelve. All right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. It has landed on a fairly hot one. Mount Fuji magma. Hot sauce. I'd probably say it's the third, second or third hottest one that I have. Uh, if somebody, oh, I'm sorry, JB, ask, it's your turn to ask a question. <laughs> oh, right on. So my question to both of you, uh, what, growing up, did you guys teach yourself your, uh, your, your craft or did you take different classes or what's up with that? Um, I can set this one up. I'm actually a uh, self-taught, um, been playing 15 years. I, I when I first started, I took like a month or two of lessons, but I was I was bored a bit and just wanted to play songs. So I would just I would literally print off pages of tabs, tape them to my drums. <laughs> I learned through tabs for the most part. Um, but yeah, all self-taught, most part. It's just, it's just like putting on something in the headphones and just practicing it, to like a band, yep. like a bench sample or something like that. Yeah. Yep, I would just take the tabs around my drums and would just listen and follow along to the tabs. This is before the, you know we had apps <laughs> to do this. Now I got Songster, and <laughs> that thing's my best friend. So, what what song on Crowd Control are you most proud of? Maybe from a drumming, and then separately, same question for Taylor as regarding bass. Um, I really like the double kick and wasted at the end. That one's a lot of fun. Um. And Riot's the other one. That one I have. I have it's, just, it's just a blast to play, especially live. Um, That's why we always close out with it. Um, yeah. I'd say from a bass perspective, uh, I like Through the Night pro like quite a bit just because it was played on an acoustic fretless bass, and that was really hard to do. <laughs> You gotta yeah, imagine that is uh, a little bit more difficult for sure. And there's there's just no lines on the. It's gotta be exact exact either. placement. But having yeah. having done that after a while, is it now like fairly easy to to play with it, or is it still always gonna be a little tough? Uh, since I don't do it super often, it's probably still gonna be pretty tough. <laughs> it's a good challenge kind of broke though. Broke it out for that one, so. It's a good challenge. Uh, let's see. Is there uh, is there is there anything on on the album that's like very outside the box for the rest of the album? Like out of nowhere, there's just like a crazy like crazy little bass solo or or just wild fills nonstop. Is there anything that like one song that's just completely different than all the rest? Um, at the end of Riot, I'd say is probably where it gets a little bit more. 
Uh, let me jam. Let me jam crazy. right. Let me jam right. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go to the end of it real quick. Dude, that's crazy. That's what I was. That's what I was looking for right there. Well done. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. How did How did King's Rest Records come around? Uh, so the founder Theo was. He's the man, by the way. The drummer for us. So, uh, so he he was our drummer for a bit. Um, we recorded actually our first album at his place at the time. Um, and then, you know, he left. We found Brady, um, but he decided to start up his his record label and asked us if we wanted to join. So we said, yeah. And the rest is history, just like that. <laughs> In. The Office. There's an episode titled Dwight's Speech. In this episode, Dwight tells the employees, a celebrity has just been involved in a car accident. What celebrity's name did he use? Uh -oh. I don't know this one. I said it was up to Taylor. <laughs> I'm not good yeah. with Joe <laughs> Trivia. Then we have our first sump of the day. Bust out the hot sauce. Mm. And hell yeah. This is what I got. I'll, before I tell you the answer, I'm going to see if chat can get it. But uh, JB, oh, you're, up, you're up on the next one. Yo, so. When it comes to your your whole catalog, is there a favorite song by the whole band? Or... Is are you guys all indecisive on like favorite songs? Talk to me, Brady. Die for a second there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hot sauce got me a little bit. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. Come on, we're ready. We want to know your answer right now in the moment. Right now, favorite song. Um, my favorite's Coffins. <laughs> Why Coffins? Um, I don't know. It's got some fun fills in it. I go a little hard at the end. It's some double kick. Uh, I really like the soft parts in it. It uh, really emphasizes kind of when we go harder. Um, yeah. I wanted to. Zoom it's in. a lot of fun to play, and we got a little time switch in there. It's really difficult to play sometimes, especially live. Um, and yeah, we go up like thirty clicks. <laughs> <laughs> Taylor, what would you say, and what was the hot sauce that you just had? Can you hold that one to the to the screen? Uh, I can hold it. I don't know how well you're going to be able to see it, though. It's pretty green. Let's see. We can see oh, it. There, there we go. Sweet. So it's more mild, but this is what I got on me. We'll take it. Uh, would you agree with Coffins, or would you pick something different? Um, In the entire catalog, I'd probably pick something different. Um. I'd probably pick uh blanket on the name of the song. Oh my god. <laughs> Is it on the new album? No, it's actually on the the previous one cuz it was one of the first bass lines that I like wrote and I was really proud of it. <laughs> blanket really bad. Oh my god. <laughs> and so it's on into it's, the, it's on into dreams. Um, it's either on into dreams, or it is before that. So before that is uh, oh, I think it's, all... uh, it's K K animation actually. Yeah, the first song that we released, <laughs> Kaleidoscopic animation. Oh, let's jam that. I want to hear that. It's the first one. It does have a little bit of a difference as far as what you guys sound like now. It's now is a little more upbeat, a little bit more stuff going on, a little more trippy and groovy, if you will. Yep. Um, yeah. When people say like psychedelic rock or stoner rock, do, do you embrace that? Like, is it cool if people say stoner rock? And are you guys stoners? <laughs> if you're allowed to answer, jobs are never watching. They don't give a sh about my show, I promise. <laughs> But if you don't want to answer, it's all good. But we'll just do a wink, wink. Um, 
So, I mean, very, very infrequently, I'd say for me, it's... It's not for everybody. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you got the two people, <laughs> the two representatives that smoke the least. That's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> but, but every uh, now and then, we may get down. Every now and then, may get down. Okay, I can dig it. It, it. it dries my eyes. It makes my eyes super red. It's super obvious when I. <laughs> <laughs> so we got to hook you up with a clear eye sponsorship. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> JB, we got time for a couple more questions. Rattle off one or two more. I'll do my final two. And uh, then we'll we'll um, we'll let the gentlemen go on their way and uh, enjoy the rest of their evening. Right on. Just a, just a left field kind of question. Uh, you guys being in airship caravan, do you guys have any side projects that you do independently? Uh, yeah, I'm I'm in a I'm in another band. <clears throat> um, a little bit more metalcore, more like a day to remember type stuff. Uh, we're previously known as Winning Isn't Everything. <laughs> Recently changed their names to Wolves of the North. But, um, you seem like you don't like the new band name. I'm not. I'm not big on it, but uh, <laughs> I liked Winning Isn't Everything. You know, I didn't. I didn't see need to just change it. But Winning Isn't Everything, I thought fit what we were doing. But we're we're going down a little bit more genty route. So yeah, I guess this will fit better. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. Does does it does uh being in two bands like ever conflict? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's all it's all about communication though, um, which I'm not always the best at. So it's conflicted twice now. Um, we've had shows on the same day and had to cancel one of the two, and it's it's you know I've had to cancel some practices because the shows, and, and I forget to you know communicate. But uh, I'm trying to get better at it. <laughs> You know, trying to like make my schedules obvious to the other bands. Right. That's that's a big thing. Communication is key. Uh Trista yeah. says Wolves of the North is totally Minnesotian. I didn't even think about it, yeah. but yeah, Minnesota yeah, Tornado yeah, Wolves. Yeah. Extremely Kings of the NFC <laughs> yeah. North. Skull to the Bull. It all, I get it. It all it all ties in. So what it is a little thought out. I get it. Um fellas, we're gonna do one final question and then we'll let you go. We appreciate your time though. But this uh, is this is a quite I'm sorry, Taylor. Oh, what was the uh, the answer to the last trivia question? Oh, I didn't tell you. <laughs> nope. It was uh, Brad Pitt. Oh, okay. Brad Pitt, and then it said it said uh, it it followed up. I already closed it, but it said after that it said Kelly looks at Michael and says, "This is karma for what he did to Jennifer Aniston." <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, that's what she says yeah. to him right there. Um, but serious final question: What is a piece of musical advice? That you can that you can give our viewers that maybe somebody in the industry at some point has said, "Hey, you should do this or that," and it made you take your career a little more seriously, or a terrible mistake you've made in any band you've ever been in that you don't want a band that's just starting today, like a band just formed in a garage next door. You don't want them to make this mistake, one or the other. Um, so I can answer the second question. <laughs> um... For your band that's just starting, um, make sure you have show etiquette. Show up early, stay for all the acts, and talk to the other bands. There's nothing worse than you know another band coming in and they're just not interested in your own in the other people's music. It's like they don't want to play shows with you again. It's that easy. So, I totally agree with all three of those. Uh, <laughs> make sure you see the first band. Yep. <laughs> And stay to the last one. Taylor, what you got? Um, I don't know if I got advice from someone or if this is necessarily a mistake that I've made in, in a band, but kind of know what level you're at and know what kind of crowd you can pull. So uh, just because if you know kind of what level you're at and you know that you can pull places, it'll be you know a lot more enjoyable for everyone else and You'll get uh, you'll get called back by that venue for sure. Uh, yeah. Fair enough. Well, gentlemen, we we appreciate you joining today, Brady and Taylor, sir. You guys have a fantastic rest of your afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Airship Caravan. Yeah, hell yeah. Let's go. Yeah, go Vikings. <laughs> Just want to end on that. Also, go Vikings. Okay.
if I if I ever come out to Minnesota, I'm meeting you boys at a bar and we're getting sloppy on a Sunday, and I hope you play said bar. Please. <laughs> Cheers. This is a lot of fun. Thank you, gentlemen, though. Yeah. Thank yeah, you. Thanks so much. This is a lot yeah. of fun.